the surface, you know, stop one of the cavemen and start talking to him about physics. It doesn't really work. The caveman's probably going to look at you and try to bunk you on the head. Right? So, what would you do? You'd probably give them symbols. Right? That have embedded in them very, very important information about the structure of the universe. And you'd expect that as that civilization grow and reach higher and higher levels, they would be able to decode those codes that was given to these uh, ancient people. Especially if you make the code in, in, um, uh, covered with all sorts of religious belief and so on, so that the code survive all of the ages to make sure that they understand this is a sacred code and all this stuff so that they would transfer the information throughout the ages. Well, we have evidence of these sun gods. These are skulls that are found in temples in South America. This was found, this is uh, in the Peruvian Museum. Um, I call it Conehead. Um, uh, when the archaeologists found this, they said, oh, this is the result of skull deformation. <laughs> you know how the ancient tradition, they would bend their head to deform them? Now, they did do that. You know, this is the bust of Nanfratiti, for instance. Um, Tutankhamun did have a distorted, deformed head. There's many skulls like that. But what, when you read the ancient text and they say, um, they talk about deforming their head, they say that they did that to imitate the sun god, to become sun gods themselves. Now, if you deform your head, right, today, it doesn't matter how much you deform it. You will never be able to exceed the volume capacity of your skull. Your head might look really weird, but the volume inside will be exactly the same. In these cases, the volume of these skulls the inside volume of these skulls are over twice the natural volume of the human skull. The normal volume of the human skull. These are not the result of skull deformation. You cannot do that by deforming your skull. The other thing that's interesting is that the hole at the bottom of the skull here where the atlas goes in, the spine tells you how big the person was, right? Because you can figure it out from the size of the spine. These people had to be between 12 and 15 feet tall. There was giants on the earth. Many ancient texts talks about the sun gods as being giants. These are very, very big people. Um, and the fact that there's multiple of these skulls found in temples all around South America tells you that it's not the result of some deformation. Have they got any skeletons to go with them? Uh, no, uh, not that I know of. There might be, I don't know. That'd be a really cool thing to have. And you can see on some of these skulls that they've carved right into the skulls. So you know material was taken out. Mm. Most likely the material was tested. But there is no data available whatsoever on the result of those tests. 
And if it was tested, would they be able to see if it was also silica-based, carbon and silica? As they would. Control? They would definitely be able to see if it was a typical DNA strand of beings that are from this planet or not. The, yeah, that was the bust. It, it's a statue of Nefertiti. This one here. This is a statue of Nefertiti that shows that she had a skull similar. So, is that the, the, uh, the brand is talking to him about the same long head? Yes. Yeah. Um, Are these skulls related to the mummies that were found in China? No. No, these skulls were found in South America and Mexico. Um, here is some of the Mexican skulls. The early ones were South American skulls. Um, this one actually has a larger volume than the comb head. And uh, this one is the largest volume ever found. Uh, Mexico and uh, the facial features are missing but the skull is intact and it's enormous that's the eye sockets so you can imagine how large that forehead was and here is the uh, the uh, each lobe uh, each hemisphere of the skull of the brain seeming to have developed independently in this case and uh, making it enormous. Go ahead. On the prior slide, mm. uh, am I correct in saying that the, uh, the orbits of the eyes are a good deal larger than normal? Oh, yeah. Much larger than normal. This person had huge eyes. And there's all sorts of features on these skulls that are not normal. For instance, in these cases, many of the feature, facial features in the jaws don't belong to an homo sapien. They're a mix between various species that uh, are not supposed to be mixed together. Here is Tutankhamun. Even Tutankhamun seemed to have a larger than expected skull. Here is his brother as well. Now, um, <laughs> there's many instances in the Egyptian and the Mayan and the Inca uh, scripts where they describe that the sun god, including in the Bible, where they describe that the sun gods actually mixed and had children with men, with women uh, of the human species. And that, that generated a whole new species, which was half sun gods, half man. So here, these might be evidence of this alt, you know, altered species, of this mix. And you would expect that these people would become pharaohs, because they would have all sorts of capacity that the average man didn't. So here, we're starting to see a whole new picture of the, of the history of human being. And in, mingled in that picture is the information that these sun gods tried to give to man. And that we are rediscovering at this time. It became clear to me eventually that the sun gods must have been sun gods for a reason. They were called sun gods in all these civilizations, just the same. Well, if the universe is different scales black holes, then in order for these sun gods to travel through space from one side of the galaxy to the other, 
they would have to enter the wormhole, the singularity, 